It is our soft pastels. Okay. Been playing with them for a bit. I will admit I have been watching a lot of videos because they're very, um, on the surface, they're very different from our old uh, pastels. So um, I'm going to teach you a couple of ways to use them. Um, one, I did include this as a gift for um, our, our shopping day, our, um, yeah, what do I want to say, our free shipping day. So this was one of the little added bonuses and I had, um, I think six people take advantage of that offer. So for those six of you, I'm excited for you that you will have this product as soon as it gets here, which I think it's going to be in this week. So let's get started. I'm so excited to have you guys with me. Yes, Talera Pastels. Good guess. All right, so they're called soft pastels. Let me just introduce them to you a little bit. I'm gonna switch over to here so that you can see. Um, on the box, it will tell you what the colors are. And I have to, I, I'm trying to keep them in order so that, um, especially as I'm demoing. Uh, Coastal Cabana, Daffodil Delight, Gorgeous Grape, Granny Apple Green, Mango Melody, Mossy Meadow, Night of Navy, and Poppy Parade. And I'm going to show you how I even at make these into more colors. <clears throat> and they all fit down in this little thing, which is great. But I will tell you, as I'm using them, rather than having to pull them out all the time, I just keep them propped like this on the edge, and it works great. Okay, so um, what makes them different from our old chalks or pastels, if, if you guys were around back then? Um, one of the things is that these come with a, um, with a film on the edge that makes it really smooth and nice to hold on to. I have to tell you, <laughs> I have an aversion to things that feel dirty. Um, I remember at home when we used to have to pick potatoes in the field, hated it. When I had to pick still, we picked rocks all the time from the field. And I hated it because I hate that feeling of dirt. Uh, when I peel potatoes, they get sprayed wet first. Wet dirt is okay. Dry dirt is not. So this dry, chalky feeling is just ugh, nasty. It's It would be like scraping your fingers on um, a blackboard for some of, some of you. So um, I don't want to lose that nice feel. But in order to use these... I need to take away that film. So I'm going to show you how to do that as we're stamping. Um, let me scoot this up here. I also wanted to show you some of the other tools that I have, have found to be very um, effective and that I'm using. So um, I grabbed some brand new sponge daubers that I had just bought. I needed more. And um, so I just dedicated the whole whole set of five to chalks. Um, I'm also using the spatula end of my um, take your pick tool. I'm using that quite a bit. I took the cap off just because I'm going to be using it a lot. So uh, you'll find that that's very helpful. Or you could also use um, the edge of your scissors for the for the technique that I'm going to show you. So I'll lay those there that there as well. Um, you can use your blender pen. You can use your um, water painter. And I will tell you that Versamark is another thing that you will definitely want to have um, standing by for this. Another thing that I've added, because um, I remember when we used chalks before, that I like to set it. Y'all know I don't like to touch chalk, so I don't like it to feel gritty or or, or granular. Um, so I do like to set it. So I did go up and grab my very expensive aerosol hairspray that I, I rarely use aerosol. And so I'm like, all right, so I'll go grab that and I'll just use it for this demo till I buy some cheap hairspray. Cheap hairspray is great for setting this. Okay. Hey, Karen, welcome. Um, so those are, uh, there's probably some things I forgot that I will talk about along the way, but those are some of the basic things that I've found to be helpful in using these. So let me just scoot some of this aside. And I'll scoot this up a little bit. All right. So I have quite a few projects 
that I've completed with it. I'm probably going to just show you the technique for each project and then um, I will show you the finished project. How's that sound? Okay, so the first one, um, and I, I've done this on, I've done a lot of these techniques on white and also on black just so that you could see the difference. And this one I think you would call, we would have called pop and pastels. And in this case, I used a stamp. I'm using the hand penned stamp set for most of what I'm doing here. Um, not die cutting anything, so just using the stamp set. Um, I pulled this one out because this is going to be my focus for my stamps in the mail class next month. And so I've been looking at all kinds of fun things to do with that. So I'm going to take my big stamp and I'm just going to ink that with Versamark. And we're going to just get a little bit of this on, well, most of it on here. I'm going to come off the bottom edge. All right. Um, now, for this one, I want to make, um, well, first of all, let me explain about how you want to start your chalks off. So I, I told you about that smooth finish. If you look here, you might be able to see that I have, um, I have already started scraping this. So I'm going to just scrape. I'm just taking one of my larger blocks and I'm going to scrape some of the bottom, a little pile of color there. That's my Daffodil Delight. Give me one second while I just turn these lights off because there's no use wasting those batteries. Okay. Um, now, I told you that I made several different colors. And because I'm using some designer paper and showing you... Oh, shoot. I think I forgot to bring the designer paper in here. I wanted to show you a really cute uh, card design using DSP because our DSP designer series paper is on sale... Um, coming up in the next uh, June 1st. And I, I have a really cool idea, but I might be able to run out and grab that for you then. But anyways, my DSP colors are Petal Pink, Garden Green, and um, some um, 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 Misty Moonlight. All right, so I decided to mix these two colors, Daffodil and Poppy, together um, in lower amounts of the Poppy <laughs> because I want it to just be slightly pink. Okay, and then for my green, um, of course, we don't have a garden green, but we've got two greens. So I'm going to use a little bit of the granny apple green and a little bit of the mossy meadow. So I'm going to use those together. And I'm trying not to make a big hole in here, so I'm trying to use different areas and I will probably move that around, but I, I think I will always keep a little handle at the top to hold those by since I hate touching that. And uh, you don't have to do that, of course, if you don't care. Um, I'm going to just take my sponge dauber, going to grab these greens together, just mix them together, and I'm going to dab. I'm going to dab where I see, and it's hard with Versamark to see where your stamping is, so you've got to get in the right light. And it's it was called Pop and Pastels because you see how that design just pops right out there at you. Isn't that cool? I feel like there's another leaf here somewhere, but okay, we'll see that once we get the flower done. So for this, I want mostly yellow with just a touch of pink. I might just try it on there to see that's a little pinkish. And the thing with this is you can see it does not, it does not really blend well when you're using it dry. So um, I'm really going to pounce it and get it mixed good there. And then I'm going to do my flowers. I'm going to do all of them in the same color. Yeah, there's the leaf I missed. I knew it would show up somewhere. Uh, it looks like I need a little more yellow there, but. Okay, so now I'm going to just go ahead and get some red and just 
get that center of those flowers a little bit pinker so that they stand out a little bit more. All right, so you see how even layering that on top of the other chalk, it still really picks up that color. Um, I'm just gonna just knock this off of here so that I can see where that leaf is that I need to get yet. All right, there we go. And if I wanted, um, I think on my sample, I might have even added a little bit of blue to the leaf, um, just because like I said, I'm using um, the Misty Moonlight as well with my designer paper. All right, now I wanna show you, you can see there's little bits of chalk here and there, and that's that's the beauty of this. It's it's That's just part of the design. It's almost like you know a watercolor artist does not have to stay in the lines. I'm gonna go ahead, I wanna show you that first. And then I want to show you what it looks like once I've sprayed it. Okay, so let me just, I'm just going to hold this over my trash can and give it a good spritz. And that's going to set it so that it doesn't rub off so that I don't have to, it, it's still going to feel a little bit, um, what do I want to say? It's not going to feel smooth because that's not how chalk feels. But I, I'll be able to rub over it and not smudge it and it's not on my finger, okay? So that's my my design piece, and then I wanna show you the card. Let me just scoot that in here. So, um, so this is the card that I did, and I learned this really cool card fold from Meg Lovin at Lovin Stamps, I believe it's called, and she uses a piece of four inch by 12 inch designer paper and of course you want to find one where you like the two designs together, the one on the back and the one on the front. You know how often you hate to cover up part of a piece of paper. Hey Tina, welcome. Um, so this is a way where you can show both. On the front, I get to see the, the one side. On the inside, I get to see the other side. How cool is that? So it's just scored, if you go like this, at five and a half and um, 11 and then you have 11 would be here. And then you just fold that one inch piece back here. And uh, for this card, I pulled out my triangle dies um, just because I wanted some interest. And one of the things that she pointed out is when you use um, this paper, because it's lightweight as your card, you need to make sure that you're reinforcing it. Like I'm putting this white inside of here so that so that it really makes the card feel more firm. And I am I added a lot to the front here, um, a lot of pieces to also make that feel nice and firm, okay? So I use my triangles here um, for the blue, for the uh, Misty Moonlight, I used uh, one of these, and I should have looked up my geometry before I started because I don't, I don't remember. Um, this is a right triangle right here. So this is one of these. Um, and then I use this piece right here. Oh, you can't see that. This, this edge piece to do this little piece. And I decided to go ahead and do the same thing and put that inside just to coordinate, uh, those two. So it's a little busy. Um, but I think the colors are fun and I love, I love this new fold. I'm going to be playing a lot more with that. And then this is just a, this is a triangle that I had made, but I didn't need. And so I just used part of that for my tag. I don't know if you can see that it all, they all have stitched edges. I just wish that this camera focused better when I um, got close to it. And I don't understand that, but okay. So that's that one. And that was Poppin' Pastels on white. The next one that I want to do is also pop and pastels, but we're going to play it with it on black. Um, and I'm going to use another stamp from that set. And that's this one. So I'm going to actually stamp it a couple of times. I decided once I started playing with this that I really liked... Um, it's, it's a very, um, what do I want to say, a muted look for, for how I did it. And so I decided that I wanted the whole piece covered. It's going to be a little tricky when I figure out which parts are flowers and which aren't. So let's do the flowers first. 
and the flower I did in the Coastal Cabana. So let's get a little bit of that here. Um, we definitely need more yellow. And I even like to mix these two yellows together. Let me see where my scraped part is. Um, and then let's see, what other colors did I use? It's like I said, it's very muted. I used some green, so we have our green here. All right, so I wanted to start with the flower while I can still see it. This light does not help at all. Once you get started, um, the design sort of pops out at you. Do you see how that's coming out? The problem with black is um, this chalk is opaque. So unlike our ink colors, which are, um, they are see-through, um, this is opaque, so it's gonna stand out on black. So that's what makes it really cool. And just trying to get all of the, okay, I think I got all the flower there. Maybe, oh, no, I missed one there. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in here with some of the green and do the stem and the leaves. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it was easier out in my other light than this one. This one's so bright that it's really hard to see. Um, I'm going to put, whoops, put a little bit more. I think this is flower here. Yeah. And then I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the rest with the green. I don't really care if it's a leaf or a flower. Okay. So did we get anything there? Hopefully I got everything. It looks like a big mess right now. Now what I found Oh, I forgot this little flower here. I wanted to do that in yellow, but I've already gotten a lot of color on it. Got some yellow and red in there. That looks pretty cool. And I'm just going to see if I missed anything up here. Okay, so it looks a mess right now. <laughs> I'm hoping that it's going to look better in a second. But um, this this really showed up here well. I'm surprised at how well that showed up with the blue. Um, and I'm so upset. Let me see if more light helps this to focus better. Is that any better? Okay. Uh, um, all right. Um, I just had a pop up on my phone. It was very, really sad. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm put, holding this over my trash can and I'm going to just give it a good spray. And I don't do a lot at once um, because I don't want to soak it. I really want to give it time to, um, to sink in. And I just look at it and go like, does that need a little bit more there or there? Okay, so hoping that in this light you will be able to see that. You see how it just looks like a magical design in the background. Okay, I'm not going to be able to get you to see all of the colors. Um, the greens are not showing up as much. I probably should have put a little bit more yellow in with the green. I probably used too much of the, uh, the dark. The darker colors do not show up well in black. Um, it takes a lot of color, especially the purple, the blue, and the green, the mossy meadow, and the night of navy. So... Um, I should have probably just stayed with the granny apple green. Let me see if on my card that I did that you, if you can see the color better. So let's see if I can get the lighting good here. It's probably even worse. Um, I did get a picture of it and it turned out really good. So I will post that so you can see. When I turn it this way, you're just seeing, well, you're seeing some of it, but you're not seeing the color. You're just seeing the the uh, raised image where the, the chalk is sitting, but there you can see it a little bit. 
okay so that is pop and pastels on white and um on black and of course um you can do it on black and any dark color so it doesn't have to just be black all right um i also did pop and pastels i'm not going to show that one i did pop and pastels on an embossed image okay i didn't make a card with it um and you can probably see if i get it at the angle where i had the other one you can see a little bit of yellow there but you can see how it colored the embossed image and it will do that remember the ink is see-through um translucent i guess would be the word but chalk is opaque so therefore it's going to stick to your embossed image so i thought that was a sort of cool look i know that you really can't see the colors but i've got some blue here greens here yellows here and then i actually just took the corner of the nice sharp corner and of course they won't always be sharp but i actually wrote the thanks with the chalk um, I actually wrote it in Granny Apple Green, and then I just touched it up with a little bit of Coastal Cabana. All right. So I'm not going to show that one. Um, but I am going to show, I am going to emboss, excuse me, with white. And we're going, I'm going to show you how to watercolor with the chalks. So let me get my things here. Uh, we're going to stamp this, so let me use my sponge dauber on here. We're going to ink with Versamark. And I'm going to stamp that, add some powder. All right, and then we're going to heat that. Let me just grab a piece of cardboard here, and we can just heat right on that, so don't mind the noise. Takes a second to heat up. There we go. The second you let your hand off of it, it's going to slide away. I keep dumping this excess chalk in my lap. My skirt will look a mess till I'm done. Okay, so I'm going to actually turn this into a, a palette. Again, um, I think we're okay with our yellow there. So I'm just going to wipe this green off just so we don't mix those. Um, I need um, Coastal Cabana. Just remember, I'm coloring on black, so I'm going to stay with the lighter colors because we all know how that turned out, right? Um, I need my yellow. I'm going to put a little bit more yellow on here because we need a lot of that. And then my greens, I am going to um, gonna start with this, and if I need, I'll add some of the darker green. Okay, so... What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my um, water painter and I'm going to actually squeeze some water onto here. Now, I wanted to try alcohol because alcohol would dry faster and I forgot to grab that. So uh, you could use alcohol here instead of water. All right. Now, this these do stain, so I'm going to grab my old aqua painter. And I'm going to go ahead and mix these color, this water into here to make the water wash. I'm going to go ahead and put that red in there because that'll make it nice. I just wipe that off here. And I usually have a paper towel and I do not, so it'll be on here. 
mix the green together. So basically I'm just making a little ink palette right here on my block with the chalk. And like I said before, you can get any color pretty much that you want by mixing the colors there together. Okay, so now I'm ready to color. And I found that what I like with this is just to take a brush and do little brush marks um, because you can see those brush marks when you're done. And I love that look. So um, that's, that's just what I, what became my preference. You see those cool lines in there? And I will be able to come back and add more. If it's got too much water, then I can add, um, I can just go over it again and add another layer. And that will um, bring the opacity out in the blue and it'll show up a little bit more. But I will go ahead and do, um, and do the little flowers here in blue. And they're tiny, so I'm not gonna worry too much about the brush strokes, I just get them colored in. <clears throat> all right and these flowers don't all really have an edge to them so it's a little tricky to get um to fill them in good so i might wait till it's dry and come back and see if i need to fill them in a little bit more while i'm doing blue i'm going to go ahead and come back here because i know i want some more I want this to be a really vibrant color. And it's just hard to use less water because to get it mixed, you need plenty of water. But then, um, like I said, it, it tends to decrease the opacity a little bit. So, But you can see how that second coat is really um, starting to cover up the black. Isn't that cool? Um, Let's see, let's go ahead and clean that off. And then I'm gonna come in and do the, the yellow flowers here. And I'm not worried about going over the white embossing too much because, because it's wet, it's not going to stick to that, to that white embossing as much as it did with the last technique where I showed you uh, dabbing on the, the dry powder definitely did stick to the white whereas this doesn't as much okay all right i have a question that you guys can answer for me how many of you have seen the pastels in the catalog because they're definitely a hidden product so i'd love to know how many of you have seen it in there and um, maybe how many of you have ordered it already? Maybe some of you are playing with it already. Good guys, I'm, I'm excited that you like this. Okay, I'm gonna put some more yellow here. You see how that builds up? That color just really builds up on there. I'm just, I am in love with this technique. Okay, all right, let's go to the green and get the leaves done. I think I'm going to need more green. There's a lot of leaves. It's definitely very noticeable if you miss a spot. If you think that this doesn't show up, you miss a spot, you realize very quickly. Okay, maybe I'll have enough. It's actually showing up pretty good. I'm surprised, but I might not need another coat. It'd be enough to just go over it a little bit. All right, so. All right, so two of you say you saw it, saw them, and didn't. Um, yeah, I think it was, it was very easy to go like, eh, what is that? You know, what can you do with that? And so I'm glad I got them, and it, but I'm really happy that there were some other demonstrators who um, played with them first and I could um, 
get a few I, few pointers. I've watched quite a few, and seriously, I've only picked out a couple techniques that you can do with these, just because we don't have all night. But how gorgeous is that, right? Oh, now that almost, almost was in focus. I wonder what I'm doing wrong. There we go. See how it goes in focus for a second and then it goes out. There we go. Uh, I'm glad you guys like that. <laughs> you think you need them now? <laughs> All right. Now, I want the center to be really bright. So I decided to go ahead and just take the chalk and take it right to the black paper and add it right to the center so that I would have lots of color there. You see how much darker that is than uh, where I watercolored that. Okay, so I think it's ready to be sprayed. And the only reason that I'm spraying it pretty much is because of what I just put on there. Although this is still very chalky and I think it's not coming up too bad. I don't think I would necessarily need to spray it. But because I put that chalk there, I definitely want it to, it does look like chalk paint exactly. I think that's why I love it so much. Okay, so there's just with a little bit of spray so that center will be held down. All right, so you want to see the card I did with it? Um, so I took this and I used our, I do want to show you, I, I just got to give a plug for the gingham ribbon that we carry and I'm so happy that it carries over because it looks really pretty with this yellow. Um, this is bumblebee and the color that I used there was bumblebee and I'm going to just cut the length of this here and hope I cut it long enough. And I just took it around here. On my card, I actually um, messed up the leaf and I, I did it several times when I stamped that leaf and so I, I'm not sure what was wrong with it. It looked okay and I and my, my technique must have been bad. So I did, I tied my ribbon right around here. And this is definitely easier if you have it on your card first, but I want to put it around before I put it on my card. So I, oh, I, Linda, I sprayed it with aerosol hairspray. Sorry. Um, it's what we used to do with um, our chalk pass, our chalks when we had them. So I just pulled that out again. See how pretty that looks. I uh, love that ribbon. Okay, so here's the card. I was holding you off. Here's the card. So I used um, Bermuda Bay, Coastal Cabana, and of course the Bumblebee Ribbon. And then I added our um, clear and silver epoxy uh, elements. So I added some of the diamonds there. I'm going to see if I can get this focused again. I'm not sure why. It fights with me. <laughs> Anyways, I will be posting these. I did take pictures of everything so that I can post them all and you can see them much better. All right, so um, I have a couple more. Let me just see if I can get through these quickly so I'm not keeping you forever. So the next one that I'm doing, I'm just trying to think here how I'm coordinating these. Um, so I watercolored with, um, on black, I'm gonna watercolor on white next. So we're gonna stamp it Imagine we're going to stamp it in Versamark even though we're watercoloring and I'm amazed that it worked. I, I just thought, well, I'm going to try this and sure enough, I did not have any trouble with the color, with the black running and maybe it's because of the chalk. Now, of course I didn't, you know, try to go over the edges too much, but, um, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing that I just did. Let me get some more color here. You guys are going to love this. It is so much fun scraping this stuff off. You just, you feel like you're an artist making your palette. And you are! This one, because we're not on black, I definitely want it to be a little darker. So I'm going to put some dark in with that. And again, I want my blue... Crystal Cabana, and I definitely want some Poppy Parade. Don't need a lot of that, and I want a little bit of the navy. Okay, so there I've got my little palettes going, 
and going to come back and add my water from this just so that I'm not using up my water from my aqua painter. Whoops, that was way too much water. And there might be enough water there. All right, let's start off with the yellow since we're using a lot of that. And I'm going to just... <laughs> yeah, I should have put a little more water on there. It's very, very strong, which is awesome, right? We, we just love bright colors. And I am trying to not get on the black as much as I can. However, I have a trick that I think is a bomb. Um, when we add the hairspray to it, even if we've covered this black and you'll see it's chalk, it's chalky. So, and it's opaque, so it will cover up our black lines. But I found that when I add the hairspray at the end, um, it really helps those black lines to reappear. And I just, I remembered that from having, using pastels before. And, um, you definitely want your black lines to show. The other thing that I figured that you could do if you felt like your black lines did not show enough is if we stamp this on this stamparatus did what i'm doing now stuck it back in the stamparatus and stamp the same black design on top i think that would do check out these lines in here are they not cool i'm loving this this is just and i think they're really showing up because i have this really pasty here and didn't add more water to it so it's, it's really layering on top of itself a little bit and creating a really cool look. I'm really excited that you guys are here with me tonight and um, having fun with me because this, this has just been awesome. I really, I'm going to have hours worth of work later to get ready for my helpers coming tomorrow to prep for classes this month. And, but I've been playing with this all day because I'm like, I want to show them some cool ideas tonight. Okay. Um, I am going to add, I'm going to go ahead and get some of this pink here or the red. Eh, that's not strong enough because it has way too much water on it. Let me put some down here. I just want to pick it up with my wet brush. I don't want it to be very wet because I want to put it in here. Okay. And... I think I'm going to go ahead. This is a pretty big opening here. We'll just put a little bit there. Okay. Now, I just need to get rid of some color here. Look at all that gorgeous color. Hate to waste it. Okay. So next I'm going to come in and do my blue flowers. I think I'm doing all of these blue here. I got a lot of water here on this one. So they'll be a little bit lighter. But that's okay. I want my yellow to show up the most, I think. It really is so easy to, to fill these in. Of course, the stamp set makes it easy too. All right, so there's my blue, and I'm going to add just a touch of navy to the centers. So I'm just picking up a little bit of this color right here where it doesn't even have water. And I'm just going to touch around the edge a little bit. Doing this while it's still wet so it can blend in a little bit. There we go. Okay, let me wipe that off again. And we just need to do our leaves yet. So let's mix this up here, see what color we get. I think that I would not mind having a little bit more mossy meadow. And I don't care if it isn't completely mixed because it'll give us a variegated look and that's okay. Turn this around so I can 
pull it and get that nice. Now this is not going to be, um, the lines aren't going to be as noticeable because I have more water in this, but also the black was noticeable um, just because of the nature of black cardstock and the opacity of the chalk. So, but I think I want some shading in this, so I might come back with another layer of the green. See how beautiful that's turning out. I'm so excited. Okay. Let me just grab a little green right here. I'm just going to do on the sides here where the, the shading is. can see how when the brush isn't as wet, it really gives you more color. Okay. So there we go. Now I will tell you when you're putting chalk on wet with any, with Versamark or with this or with alcohol, you cannot erase it. But, um, if you're coloring with it, just, um, <laughs> I'm not coloring with it very much normal, actually, because I could have used sponge daubers to fill that in. I didn't, I, like I said, there's so many other things that I didn't, I'm not even showing you tonight. Um, but if you were putting chalk on just if I was sponging this on or sponging an outline, I could erase it with a regular um, adhesive eraser. It would take it off as long as you haven't put it on wet. When it, once it's wet, it becomes part of the, of the design. Okay. Do you want to see the card done with this one? Okay, L let me answer some questions here real quick. Um, thank you guys for your comments. Um, so Linda, how long does it take to dry? Um, the black one that I just did, um, it feels, it looks maybe slightly wet yet. It doesn't feel wet. Like I would go ahead and glue this on my card. Um, but dry enough that I can touch it. Okay. So the paper is just a little bit needs to dry yet. Um, this one is dry enough to touch already. Okay. And you can see the paper is still a little bit wet there. I am going to go ahead and set this. Oh, I, I'm hoping that I can show you that you can, excuse me, see the difference. Um, really mad at this lighting. I don't know why this is doing, why it will not focus. It, I don't think it's the lighting. Um, but if you look at the center of the yellow flowers, um, if that's a good point to look at, actually none of it looks really bad, but actually it's the lines here on the flowers because I went over them. They're really, really light. And I, I apologize. I know you, this camera is not allowing me to see that. But I'm going to give that a squirt with hairspray, again, using aerosol, because non-aerosol would, would give me um, way too much wetness. I need it to go on as a film. And so I don't know if you can see the difference, but those black lines have just totally reappeared. And it didn't do much else to the chalk. It just left my lines. So what it did was probably take it into the paper and left my lines show again. Okay. So I'm going to say aerosol hairspray is the bomb. Um, it's something that you definitely want to have when you're, um, doing this. I'm going to just use my sham sh chamois here and looks like I'm making a mess on my mat. Chalk is very, very messy, easy to clean, but messy. Okay. All right. So here's the card I did with that. And I used the um, uh, paste, the embosser that's like the wool paste. I can't remember what it's called, guys. Um, I used our black glitter uh, ribbon. And then I, I still wanted more. I still wanted more glitter. So I used our, I don't think I brought that in. Um, I used our wide, it came from Halloween last year and we still carry it. And it's so beautiful on so many things. Uh, those of you that were on my team Zoom the other night, you saw I used this for um, in the water 
um, for some extra pizzazz uh, when we did our diorama card. But anyways, so there's that card done with the watercolor on white. And you can see the difference here um, in my coloring uh, where I had my, um, my yellow was much thicker. So here's the water wash. So it's a different look. It's not terrible, but this one's definitely much brighter and has um, more of the brush designs in it. Okay, so one more that I came up with just a few seconds before I went live. Um, and that is, um, well, I want to do pop and pastels again, but I want to show you how to um, just do a couple colors and we're finished with this wet thing. So I'm going to wipe that off because I need this for some dry powder. And um, I'm going to do our thanks from, actually, I'm not going to do that one. Let me see what time. Yeah, I'm not going to do that part because I showed you the pop and pastels. I will just, um, I want to show you direct, pretty much direct to paper. And we're going to use, um, and put my colors back on here again. And what do I want? Yellow, some yellow, daffodil, and some um, granny apple green. So I'm I'm very excited about these colors. Um, I think these are all. I'm not. I can't even say if they're all brights, um, but they're colors I really love to use. So I'm excited about them. Um, and I'm trying to think how I did this. Oh, I didn't even do that part. I did it like this. Um, I took this where I had scraped off and I went directly onto my embossed image. Basically for this one, it's like antiquing it, right? How cool is that? I hadn't tried this one yet. So this is a, this was a, like, I hope this works when I get on camera with them. And I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. This would look really pretty with um, with darker colors and, um, you know, to look real antiqued. But this these bright colors are pretty too. So this is direct chalk to paper. Look at that. Ugh, how gorgeous is that? Oh my goodness. I love it. Now, for this, you definitely need to spray it. Um, and I've tried this. I tried using sponge daubers on it, but the paper grabs everywhere. And it's because the chalk is so dry, when you have it in this powder form, it doesn't want to stay. Um, it, it goes everywhere. It goes into all the grooves. So this direct to paper with these pastels is just fabulous. Probably the technique that I'll use the most because how fast was that? And how, I know, it's probably too bright to even see how gorgeous it is. Let me see if I turn the light down a little bit. You can see how pretty that is. All right, let me give a little squirt, and then I'll show you the card. All right, and now that's all set. It's all good to go. And this is the card that I did. And I told you I didn't use this embossing folder yet. I used the little flower one. And I used the pop and pastel technique here with Versamark. And then I just dabbed on, um, I, I used the sponge dauber with the color and just dabbed on the color so that it says thanks. Very simple, quick card. But I do love how this turned out. And I, I did this one first because I thought this would be my favorite. But this one actually turned out to be my favorite. Um, these flowers are a little um down in the center so they didn't want to catch the powder as or the chalk as much um but this one mm, that's my favorite so i will um i will get that mounted on something and i will try to post that with the other pictures that i'll be posting actually i'm not going to show you the water one i'm just going to show you the alcohol one but this is um we took water we put water in this pan i shaved off some of the pastels and I think because of um, surface tension, the chalk will stay on the chalk, on the top for a little bit, and that and it sort of moves around. And then we just laid the paper in there, and then just lifted it right up, and the chalk um, 
created this really pretty design on the paper. I haven't done anything with this one yet, but you can see how cool of a background that could be. All right, then we decided to play with alcohol. And so we did, um, we tried a couple of things. We tried that same technique with putting the chalk on the top. And you can see in the bottom there, that's where the chalk went. Because the surface tension does not exist, I'm guessing, in alcohol like it does in water. So it just went right to the bottom. Created a really pretty rainbow effect um, in there. It looks it looks almost like gold. Um, it, it looks like some gold flecks in there. Anyways, um, then we decided to just to take watercolor paper. And I'm just going to set up here really quick. Um, so I have a piece of watercolor paper here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, dip this in my alcohol and just soak it. And I'm going to lay it on my paper. And here, now I'm going to take my pastels. And I'm going to just get some color on the paper. And you could leave it, um, you could leave it just like this. Oh, good, Sandra. I'm glad that helps. Okay. Um, those are the colors I used before. I should have done something different this time, right? Let's throw in a little bit of the navy. And maybe I'll do some red too. Hey, let's be adventurous, right? It's just fun. Every time you do this, it's going to look different. Now, you could leave it like that. That looks really cool. But um, I decided to play with it and just see if I spray it with alcohol, what different look can I get? And I wanted it to um, to run a little bit so you can see how the alcohol is allowing that. So I basically have the paper covered. I'm not sure that you can see it, but it's very wet. Um, and you just have to leave it sit and, and work itself out for a little while. Um, and then you, I even came back later and added some more. This was um, the original one where we had just um, spritzed on the powder and left it and almost left it dry. And then we sprayed it and then the color spread more. Um, this was the second version where we dipped it, uh, had it wet, put the powder on and more quickly sprayed it like I did here. And... I'm hoping that you can see um, we did use the first three colors that I used, the Coastal Cabana, Daffodil Delight, and Granny Apple Green. Now, this alcohol that's in here was in here from last night. So I have, I have no preconceived notion that it is still good and effective as alcohol. And I think that's why I'm getting this look right here. So if you guys want to bear with me, I brought some more alcohol in here and I'm gonna go ahead and put some in there and I I got this alcohol it's 91% um, because I wanted to play with the vellum um, and alcohol technique which I love and we played with that yesterday as well so I'll be doing some videos on that but um, right now we're talking about pastels so I'm gonna set that aside to dry and I'm going to try this one. So this is the new alcohol. And I didn't put quite as much in here. So it's going to take me a second to get it soaked. Okay. Now let's just use some different colors here. How about if we try some dark green? I feel like I'm on the wrong side here. Um, as you'll see in my video, and if you've watched other videos, um, if you want to use the pastels for like sponge sponging on, you definitely need to, you, it's, this is drying really fast. You definitely need to get, um, to get that little finish off. So this little spatula tool on your take your pick tool is fabulous for that. All right. I want to get some more alcohol in here real quick. 
yeah that's spreading much better so obviously my alcohol was too old and it didn't allow it to um to spread because you can see the difference here i think already you can see how that's changing i wonder if you blow on it if it created a different yeah there you go well that's a cool cool effect um okay yeah pretty cool so i'll see if i can come up with something and uh, a design with these and post that today um so i hope that this just is a little inspiration to inspire you to either order the pastels or get them out and play with them and see what you can come up with um i did watch a, a lot of other videos until I felt confident myself in playing with them. And then I was inspired to try, try different things. So, um, just get that up here so you can see. I don't like where that dark green is mixing at all, but, and it's still moving. Like there's still a lot of alcohol there. So who knows what this could look like till the time it's done. But I am, I am still like liking the original one where the colors didn't move as much. Um, it still gives a really cool background. So, um, a little less alcohol here, definitely less effective alcohol. 